first time I met Clara was my first day as a CNA. Before I even saw the woman, I was warned of her wicked pinch, her bad attitude, and the famous Clara Cooter kick. I got to know Clara very well over the 11 months I cared for her. Clara was a bold woman with a bold spirit. Over the next several minutes, I will tell you how Clara lived her life to the fullest before and after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Before being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Clara was a dedicated family woman, a friend, and a wild party animal. Clara's four children recall her as a woman that always had the house clean. She always had dinner ready for her husband, Dick, and she always kept their favorite foods and games on hand. Clara's husband, Dick, loved pickled eggs and always had multiple jars in the house. Clara also liked to host coffee parties Sundays after church. Her friends and family would come over and they'd waste the rest of the weekend away laughing about what was happening in their lives. Clara is also, instead of hosting parties, liked to attend parties. She was often known as the center of attention, which was also known um, as the wild party animal. Clara, one drunken Christmas night, pulled herself up on the dining room table and began to strip, take off all of her clothes in front of family and friends. This is my favorite story of Clara. Clara showed me all of these qualities even after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Every night I would go into Clara's room and I would find her with her arms outstretched in a plate of three musketeers offering me dinner. This was Clara trying to care for me as she cared for her family. Clara also was the chit chatter at the dining room tables. We actually had to move her from table to table every few days because her table mates be so tired of hearing the same woman tap, talk and talk and talk. Clara was often confused where the party was at. In the middle of the night, you would hear her yelling her husband's name, Dick, Dick, where are you? And you'd run in her room expecting something horribly wrong, but instead you'd find herself pulling herself out of bed, trying to get up and get a robe on to walk out and find the party. You would get her ready, take her out to the dining room, only to find a dark dining room with nobody there and not a party in sight. In conclusion, I may not have known Clara before being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but I could still see the same woman as described to me by her children. Clara was a bold woman with a bold spirit. You now understand how Clara lived life to the fullest before and even after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Clara's attitude and physical attacks were not symptoms of Alzheimer's. They were the symptoms of a very wild woman who refused to stand or to let her ground go.